So we're going to move forward with our with the next section of our event. Um, we've got Chris Dwan, who's going to be um, sitting with our candidate for mayor, Marianne Wallace, and asking her a few questions. So uh, take it away, Chris. <laughs> All right, I'm going to restart that question. There's a huge amount of development in the city right now, and we've spent a lot of time talking about the project labor agreements so that the construction jobs benefit the right people. How will you work going forward to make sure that the permanent jobs also benefit Somerville residents? I think that that needs to be part of any community benefits agreement moving forward with developers to ensure that the jobs stay local and that they're good paying jobs for the residents of Somerville and local people around us because the economy in Somerville is dependent upon people spending their money here and if they have good jobs they'll spend their money here. Are there any specific programs that you would impl implement as the mayor in order to make sure that community benefit agreements are swiftly reached or equitably reached and are effective? I would implement a negotiating team that specializes in negotiations because I think that for any quick and expedient and fair agreement, you have to have strong negotiating skills. That sounds perfect and that's a great segue into the next question here, which is about um, in the negotiations between this Union Square Neighborhood Council and the developer for Union Square. What we've learned is that there was a lot left on the table in the negotiations between the mayor and the developer originally. How will you fight as mayor to be sure that we get the best possible deal in similar future developments? For me, one, negotiation is a strong suit of mine. I negotiate on a regular basis for statewide contracts and in policy and workload. So I would take those skills and ensure that we negotiate on the be benefit of all residents. That has always got to be the priority that the negotiations benefit the residents of Somerville before they benefit developers. Fantastic. And what, uh, what points of leverage do you intend to use to get the best possible deal for our residents? Because everybody wants to be in Somerville. So we use, need to use that negotiation power to get what the residents of Somerville and workers of Somerville deserve and surrounding communities. So you mentioned uh, your negotiation experience and your experience with the state. Uh, can you speak a little bit about how that experience prepares you to be mayor? So for the last 22 years, I've been a frontline social worker with the Department of Children and Families. And I also am a regional vice president. So as part of our contract negotiations, I am on the negotiation team for 13 state agencies. So it's not just the interests of the membership I serve, it's also members from many different other agencies. So you have to learn to negotiate for the benefit for all. I also sit on a training committee with the state and we have to negotiate trainings for state workers um, plus just general negotiation. I also negotiate policies with the state and we de determine workload but also what's in the best interest of the residents of the state of Massachusetts. Fantastic. You mentioned uh, your work also as, as an executive. And could you speak a little bit about the experience you'll bring to um, running the city administration? I think my experiences will be more of a collaboration. I think that we've moved away from collaboration. And my experience in state government cur currently to get the most effective work product and the best for residents of the Commonwealth has been sitting down and negotiating and making concessions or coming to better agreements, but really having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with people rather than dividing people. Great answer. I'd like to turn to uh, the tenant's right to purchase now which we expect that the City Council is going to bring uh, a home rule petition to a vote before their end of the next term. And the first question here, this is the tenant's right to purchase. Um, 
do you support any exemptions to that right? I would only if it was going to a family member, if the house was going to a family member of the homeowner, that would be the only exception. Other than that, I would fully support a tenant's right for first purchase. Could you speak a little bit about um, why you would make that exemption? As a homeowner, I'm a homeowner. Um, currently, I have family upstairs and downstairs for me. So in my case, in, in some of the residents that I see in Somerville that own homes, most of them are family members upstairs and downstairs. So that would just add to the displacement. Now you're asking them to displace from family. So I think that that is where my concern would be. Excellent. And. Um, the mayor has a substantial amount of influence to um, implement and execute on laws. How would you act to be sure that long is, the law is strong and effectively implemented? And specifically, how will you handle pressure from real estate groups like the Small Property Owners Association? So I'll take it in two parts that as far as influence, I have as a union um, leader and as a social worker for the Commonwealth, I have plenty of experience lobbying with the legislature, so I know many legislatures throughout the Commonwealth um, that has given me extra advantage. Um, also with small property, the small property owners, um, I stand my ground. I'm a person that throughout my life has stood on my principle and values and I don't cave for those values, from those values. We saw in the news today that uh, there's a lawsuit that uh, actually the Somerville, one of these groups has brought against the city now. Um, would you bring any special, any particular direction to the city's response to lawsuits like that? I think that, again, I think coming from my background, a lot more conversations. I think from my understanding of what I read about it, they felt like that they weren't heard. And I feel like sometimes in the city, there are many different groups that don't feel heard and causes a lot of division in the city. And I think we need to find a way, in my experience of bringing people together to have those conversations. I think some of those fights could be eliminated because it sounded like to me that they were looking for more of a conversation and found that the lawsuit was the only way that they felt that they could have that conversation. I read it that way too. I'd like to stay on with uh, with housing for a moment. Um, the question here is, do you want to update our current inclusionary zoning rules? And uh, would you increase the affordable housing percentage? Yes, I would. Because part of the biggest problems we're facing in this area is not enough adequate affordable housing or opportunities for affordable home ownership. So we need to increase it because without good jobs, without access to transportation, reliable transportation. I spent 40, 45 minutes on the platform the other, yesterday waiting for a train. Um, I, people aren't going to be able to be self-sufficient. They, they need to be in this community. Many people do not own vehicles, and if they're pushed further and further out without a transit system, it's going to make them difficult to get to jobs. And uh, how would you change the exemption for very small developments? We currently have a, a, a lower bar of six units, I believe, before these, uh, the inclusionary zoning kicks in. Would you change that? So in my conversations with residents, a lot of residents have asked that that be changed, that they don't understand why we haven't looked at smaller um, developments. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so it's definitely something that I feel like the residents have voiced, and many of them actually being homeowners that raised that, that they would happily see us include smaller developments. All right, I'd like to turn to climate for a moment. And um, one of my colleagues in the Climate Coalition uh, scribbled a note to me on, on the, the flyer that's passed out. You suggest a, a Green New Deal for Somerville. And uh, we're curious, what does that mean specifically? So I think that we need to accelerate our CO2 reduction goals. I also think we need to include more rooftop gardens and more community gardens. I also think that we need to look at um, more opportunities for Somerville to have local food and local energy. 
are there other specific things that we could do in the uh, the city administration and how it is implementing various city programs that you could, as a mayor, more just directly grab hold and change and change the uh, direction? Well, I also think again when we come back to the development and the community benefits agreements that we definitely need to work with developers around making more energy efficient housing. I think that the bar is set too low. We probably need to increase that if we want to increase our CO2 reduction faster. So I have a very challenging one at the bottom here. Um, and it starts with a statement, rents are too high and wages are too, too low. What will you do to fight to raise wages and or reduce rents in Somerville? So what I can say is that I think, again, we, we can't shortchange prevailing wage when we're talking about public jobs. We also need to be having an expectation from people who are employers in our city that they're going to pay a livable wage. And therefore, although it does not take away the affordable housing issue, if we add some more incentives or raise the affordable housing um, limit, then at least it will help. And the final prepared question that we have here is um, we are talking about adding between 10,000 and 20,000 new housing units to Somerville over the next um, 10 to 20 years. What do you think is a good goal and how do we manage the pace of that expansion? I think we need to look at where the developments are and the traffic that it's causing. Um, I think increasing housing is great because it will hopefully address the, some of the housing issues. But the problem is we keep building, but when you keep building them as luxury apartments and luxury condos, you're not addressing the affordable housing piece of it. So we need to do more to make sure that they're affordable to the residents of Somerville and other residents locally. And unless questions have come in from the audience, we've exhausted the prepared questions. And so I would ask you just, if you would like to, um, give a couple minute statement on how you see yourself being ready to be mayor of Somerville. I see myself being ready to be mayor of Somerville because like I said, I spent the last two, 22 years as a frontline social worker. I've known firsthand how good jobs, transportation, good education, affordable housing, treatment of mental health and substance abuse really can stabilize a family and help a community to grow. We need to band together and create a movement to make some real change in Somerville. And I feel like there's a lot of movement in Somerville, but it's not always being together. And the first step is about bringing people together. And I think part of the things that I bring to it, this is being from Somerville, but also working with many people that are considered the newcomers of Somerville. And I think that that's an asset. Well, thank you very much for uh, the answers there. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.